Alrighty guys, we're going to talk about our other special line segments. So the ones that we are going to talk about today, ugh, and I forgot to fix this. There's actually three, and I only have two more little lineies, so we're going to squeeze it in. But we need to talk about a median, an altitude, and a mid-segment. Um, now, median and altitude, these ones are going to be on pages 54 and 55. And I think the only, oh, well, mid segment is on 55, and then I think a little bit on 56. So we'll do 55 and 56 right there. Now, these ones are all new. Um, like perpendicular angle bisectors. We had kind of talked about those before, but these ones I don't think we've talked about at all yet. Um, so yeah, let's turn to page 54. So when it comes to a median, what a median is, it's kind of in the name. It's a middle again, but a perpendicular bisector is kind of that too, like a perpendicular bisector cut something in half. So does an angle uh, bisector. A median kind of does less than those things. It does cut a side in half, but then it connects to the angle opposite. So it's not really like a perpendicular bisector because a perpendicular bisector might go through the angle, but it might not. And it's not really an angle bisector because it's not necessarily going to cut that angle in half. So really all you have with a median is that you are working with congruent sides because again, um, with a median, um, no, nope, none of that stuff in there yet. Um, all I'm doing is I have a triangle. I'm picking a side, I'm cutting it in half with a point, kind of like a midpoint, and then I'm connecting it to the angle across. So it might not go up perpendicularly, and it might not cut this angle in half over here. Chances are actually it, that it won't. So our median math facts, it's kind of less than the other things. So it's definitely going to cut a side in half. And it will then connect to the angle opposite. But not in any sort of meaningful way. Like it's when it connects to that angle, it, it, it's not necessarily going to cut that angle in half or anything like that. Um, specifically, we're doing this with a point. Um, so like the point that we connect to in the middle, um, in this case, S is a midpoint. So it's kind of like a bisector because we cut a side in half, but it's not perpendicular because it doesn't go up at a 90. It goes up at a whatever, because it's going to always connect to that angle opposite. So this is a line segment while a perpendicular bisector is just a, a line that's cutting something in half like it goes completely through and an angle bisector was a ray this is specifically a line segment because it's connecting a midpoint to an angle so that's kind of the difference here now again we can do some math with that though because it does have a little something special so find x and the measure of this angle if ps is a median um well, so the thing is, they've marked this side here with a little mini equation involving x, and this one, and that angle. But I don't know anything about that angle, because this is not a perpendicular bisector. All I know that PS is a median, so that definitely means that S is a midpoint, so these two sides are equal, which that's really enough to help me solve for x, because I can set those two equations equal to each other, since S is a midpoint, and that will allow me to solve for X, and then once I know it, I can plug it in to find this angle here, because X is X no matter where, and I can't do anything with this little mini equation because I don't have something to relate it to, so I don't even want to use it. So we'll subtract our 5X on both sides and add that 7, and so I'm going to get 5X equals 10, so X is 2, um, so I found the measure of that, or found x, and then we want to find the measure of this angle. So if I plug it in, 2 times 15 will give me 30 plus 
42, which is 72 degrees. And that's like believable because it definitely doesn't look straight up and down like a 90. It looks less than 90. So yeah, I believe it. Okay, so not too much to know about a median aside from it is connecting a midpoint to an angle opposite. An altitude, now the way that I always think about an altitude is I think about um, a mountain because when you're like climbing a mountain, you have to worry about your altitude, which is like how high up you are. So what an altitude does is kind of finds the top of a mountain. Like if you think about a triangle, you find the top of the triangle. So kind of an angle. And starting at that angle, you need to drop down perpendicularly because to find the height of the mountain, you have to go right from the tippy top straight down to the bottom. So this is going to start at an angle and connect to a side. It will be another line segment, but it doesn't necessarily cut the angle in half. It doesn't even necessarily cut that bottom side in half. All that has to happen with an altitude is that I have a right angle. And kind of two because you have a right angle on either side. So we're working with right angles. And that's kind of it. So again, if I kind of think about a picture of a triangle here, what an altitude does is it starts at an angle and drops down perpendicularly. And that's it. So then you can kind of see like these sides aren't cut in half. This angle isn't necessarily split in half. None of that other stuff that we've talked about. This isn't a midpoint. All I have is a 90, and that's kind of it. So some altitude math facts. There are not very many. Um, basically, like I said, we're just going to be a line segment that starts at an angle. and drops to opposite side perpendicularly. So that bottom angle I can set equal to 90. That's really all I get here. That's the only sort of mathy thing that I can do. Um, now, the one interesting thing, though, about an altitude is sometimes it will be inside your triangle like this. But if I have a right triangle and I pick this angle here, when I try to go to the opposite side perpendicularly, my altitude happens right on the triangle itself because it already has a 90 degree angle in it. And even weirder than that, um, let me think of a good way to draw this. Oh, yeah. If I have an obtuse triangle like this one, again, if I pick this top angle right here and I need to drop down to this side perpendicularly, that could that's going to happen in this case outside of the triangle. So it's almost like you have to put a little tail out here and drop down perpendicularly on the outside of the triangle. So that's kind of weird and interesting that your altitude might happen inside, might happen outside, or might happen right on the triangle. Um, always right on if it's right. Um, sometimes outside if it's obtuse, because like I could draw this altitude here and it would be inside. Um, but if it's acute, I think it's always inside. So. Alrighty, so find X, C, D, and D, B if A, D is an altitude. So if I know that this is an altitude, I know that this right here is 90. I don't know that these two sides are congruent. So I really shouldn't set those two little baby equations equal to each other because I don't know. An altitude doesn't guarantee that. What I do know, though, is that if they're talking about this angle right here as 4X minus 6, and it's pointing to that angle right there, it will be equal to 90. So that's how I should solve for x in this one. I shouldn't assume that these two things are equal. 
but I can, because an altitude by definition will touch at a 90, I can assume that this 4x minus 6 is 90. So I'll add the 6 over, and we'll get 4x equals 96, and then divide by 4, so x is 24. And that's helpful because then I can find each of these side lengths because now I can plug x in. Because once I know x, x is x. So if I plug it in here, 24 plus 7 will give me that CD is 31. And then if I plug it in here, again, I shouldn't assume that it's the same, although it might be. So if I double 24, that's 48 minus 15 will be 33. Oh, so not the same. And they don't need to be because an altitude doesn't guarantee that. Um, but now I found all the things that I need to find. So there you go. Now the last guy that we have our mid segment. Now what a mid segment does if we take a look at our pictures here, um, what a mid segment will always do is it will um, connect a midpoint to a midpoint. So I need to find midpoints of two sides. So connects midpoint to midpoint. Um, so it is a line segment. And when you do that, what happens is the two sides opposite of each other, because like this mid segment now that you've drawn and the side opposite of it will be parallel. So like using this picture right here, I'll be able to say that HG is parallel to RT. And that's useful because I can get some of those um, alternate interior or corresponding pairs to be congruent. Also what's true is that HG is half of RT. So that's super nice. I can also write it another way. Like if I know RT is like 10, I can take half and get five for the smaller one. But another way to think of it too is if I double HG, then I get RT. So in this case here, I know HG is nine. So if I double that to get the bigger one, RT has to be 18. And that's helpful too because down here I can't set 4x minus 2 equal to 7x minus 1 because those line segments are not equal to each other. But if I take the big one and cut it in half, I get the smaller one. Now that doesn't seem like too much fun because half of 7 isn't very nice and half of 1 isn't very nice. So the other thing that I could do is take the smaller one, the 4x minus 2, and double it and then it will equal the bigger one. And that seems easier to do because doubling something is always simple. So we get 8x minus 4 equals 7x plus 1. We subtract the 7x both sides, add the 4, and so we'll get that x is 5. And then I can plug it in to find the sides if I want. So here I'd have 20 minus 2 is 18. And now this one should be double that, so it should be 36, but we can check. So if I plug in 5, 35 plus 1 is 36. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, yeah, I think we're going to leave it at that for now. This last page here, this page 56, I think we're going to fill out together. So maybe we already did that, and I'm talking in the past, and it's like I'm a mind reader. Anyways, so...